What is up, JL Life? Modo here. In today's video, we're finally going to be swapping out the stock control arms on my Jeep for some aftermarket from Metal Cloak. Y'all, stay tuned. So if you guys aren't aware, my lift is kind of a mess. I got stock control arms in the rear and in the front uppers. The lowers, I have cab fab lower adjustables. I already have the metal cloak springs, the rock sport shocks. Uh, however, the shocks are getting old. I'm going to be replacing those too. I have a rock crawler track bar in the back, steer smarts in the front, Mopar bump stops in the back, rock crawler in the front, and I got the old... Mopar lift sway links up front. It's a mess and it's time to start cleaning things up mainly with the control arms. So here's what I'm gonna be putting in today. All eight of the control arms from Metal Cloak for the Jeep JL. Real quick, I wanna talk about the features of these control arms before I put them in. Your lower control arms are one and a half inch DOM tubing, uh, 0.187 thickness. They do come with the standard bend inwards of the control arms to allow for clearance of turning of the tires so you don't require so much offset. Uh, they are adjustable and use a jam nut to lock it in place. Now let's start talking about some of the things that make the metal cloak arms unique from everyone else's in the industry. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is going to be the their joints. Now what they call this is the Duraflex joint. So what this joint is is essentially your normal OEM style joint, which is typically just a or a metal sleeve in the middle surrounded by nothing but rubber, and it's all binded together. So there's not really much rotation. Your flex is very limited with that type of joint, but because of all the rubber, it provides a very smooth comfort with that type of joint. However, the problem is when you want to go and do Jeep things, you don't have a lot of flex. Your next style of joint is what they call a Johnny joint or a flex joint, which that is a, a ball inside your, your joint housing. It's a ball, has two openings on the end so the bolt can go through it. It's surrounded by a rubber bushing. And what that allows is a lot more flex because of the, the style of the joint, because it can move freely with some resistance. And the rubber around the joint helps with vibration dampening to give you a much more smoother ride when you're driving on road. They're great for daily drivers and they, they do require maintenance and routine greasing. Uh, your, your standard clevet joint, your OEM style joint, doesn't typically require any sort of greasing. And when the joint goes bad, you just replace the whole end. But the rubber helps vibration dampening and makes your ride a lot smoother. Then you get all the way up to your heim joint, which is the metal ball, and it is encased in a metal housing, and there's a very thin space for grease. Because it's metal on metal, uh, the vibrations you feel from the tire, the road, it goes into the joint, it goes into the cab, and it's just a lot less comfortable on road. What makes Metal Cloak's joint unique is that it is a combination of your OEM style joint with the johnny joint now there is a ball in here and i'm going to leave leave some links in the description for some videos metal cloak does doing a much better job showing the inside because i'm not cutting open this to show you guys because i'm going to use it there is a small metal ball in the middle and of course you got your your openings on both ends and it rotates and it has a total of 68 degrees of misalignment which is a lot now one of the drawbacks depends on what side of the fence you fall on about these joints is that they are maintenance free. So what that means is you have a Johnny joint that requires routine greasing. You go willing, you need to grease it again and your control arms can be a bit of a pain in the butt to get under and greased and being able to get your grease gun on top. Well, with these, you don't need to do that. And it is known that though maintenance free joints last a good amount of time without routine greasing they're supposed to go bad sooner but however if the joint does go bad buying just the joint itself is relatively cheap it's 30 bucks and replacing it all that you really need is a mallet <laughs> and a piece of wood to kind of bang it against uh, when we get to the point where i need to replace them 
We'll do a video showing how to do that. The Duraflex joint is supposed to be very durable. It has Kevlar in it. It is supposed to last a long time. It does not require grease, which of course it depends on which side of the fence you fall on, if that's a good or a bad thing. If you prefer less maintenance, maintenance free is the way to go. Just another comparison between your OEM style and this one. At the OEM style, the rubber is kind of fused to everything inside. When you're going through instructions of your lift and it's OEM style, they tell you to, you know, put the bolt in, don't torque or tighten anything down set the vehicle down let it get at right height before you tighten it it's because the rubber around the housing is all fused together so if it's you know articulated all the way down and you torque it down and it's not moving how it's supposed to and you let that suspension down again you're putting all that bind in the rubber as it rotates back up well what's awesome about these is that there's a very tight joint however when it gets to that point the actual rubber will start to rotate. It will prevent binding. So that is another awesome thing about this. I'm not saying to torque everything down while you're drooped. Still do things correctly. Don't torque anything down until you're at right height. Good habits, good habits. There is already grease around the Duraflex joint. And if you do replace it, you will need to grease it, but it is all sealed in and dirt can't get in big killer to any tie rod end um joint end anything that you grease is getting dirt inside which is just inevitable doing the type of things you do inside of a jeep or any other four by four vehicle you're, you're going to get dirt in it and the idea of routine greasing is to push the dirt out because as the dirt grinds around inside of it it will kill your joint it's very damaging well this should not be an issue with these so the next thing I want to talk about is the gold-plated zinc that Metal Cloak uses on their product. Metal Cloak kind of go hand in hand with gold. Now, if you got an issue with gold arms and you're like, I just don't want the gold under there. Well, let me just kind of explain why they use this process. Well, they, they say it has it's very durable finish. It will hold up from scrapes on the rock and prevent rusting. Now, we live in a very dry climate. I know I'm not going to have any issues with rust with these, so I'm not too concerned. However, if you don't like the gold, Metal Cloak says that you can paint their control arms whatever color you want. Just don't sand it and don't sandblast it because you're going to be taking off the protective coating. These are supposed to prevent rust. I'm probably going to paint them, I don't know, black or gray. I don't know yet. Another thing about Metal, Cloak, Metal Cloak's control arms is the way their their joint end actually goes now if you watch carefully you'll you'll see it rotate you see that it goes from there to there now the way the reason they do that is to put less bind in the joints because you know let's say you got a point here and a point here and you put in a control arm that goes out for the bend for the tire and cuts back in well, if it's straight, as you can see, because it's not going in to the mounting surface straight, there's going to be bind. There's a caveat to this, both good and bad. The good is that it will be easier to install because of that, and there won't be bind in the joint, kind of setting it off, just not going in there straight, if that makes sense. However, the downside is, so rather than being able to make adjustments to your control arms by increments of half turns, you know, it's gonna be, have to be full turns. It is supposed to have excellent road dampening traits. And so what that's basically gonna mean is supposed to translate to a very smooth ride. And just to kind of double touch on the 68 degrees of misalignment, that is going to translate to a lot of flex off-road. I have seen plenty of people beat the hell out of these lifts and they, continue to hold up great and I got nothing really bad to say about it however I would just like thicker arms if metal club you're listening yeah well, I'm gonna get those put under the Jeep I'm gonna to try to get it aligned closely to where it's at now I'm gonna take it to get an alignment and making sure all my geometry is correct no yeah you can do it yourself it's just so much easier having a machine and a very smart computer on it to be able to tell you what all of your measurements your caster your thrust angle, your 
make things easier. But after I get the arms in, it's going to be going to a shop to get an alignment. And while I'm at it, I am going to be installing new Rocksport shocks on Bromance. As I've already said, I have Rocksport shocks on Bromance and I've been very happy with them. Is holy crap, it, it just with the springs and the shocks themselves had made a huge difference in the ride comfort of my Jeep. If you've been following the channel for a while, I had the Mopar lift on before and God, it was such a rough ride. It bounced around a lot. It was not comfortable. I did not enjoy it. I threw in the metal cloak springs and shocks and it made a world of difference. Now, I have heard from other people saying that it is very, these are very rough with a two door, but I can attest on my four door, they are smooth as I do want to talk about another thing I am going to be doing before I install this. I'm actually going to be taking a Dremel and cutting off the boot. Uh, the reason being, one, my shocks are kind of rubbing off the red paint because of it. And I don't want it to lead to rust on my shocks. And two, I've actually been in a couple of situations where it has actually extended beyond where the shock ends and this boot covers and as it compressed back down the boot just kind of crunched up into the body of the shock and it just made it very crunched and it might as well just deal with this now and take it all off and when i put in the new shocks i also got the outboard shock relocation brackets now i didn't use them before and everything was fine however i'm adding a lot more articulation to my Jeep, putting these control arms in. With my setup now, I didn't really need it because I never really rubbed it. However, because I'm adding a lot of flex to my Jeep now, Metal Cloak recommends using these to take full advantage of your, of your articulation because if you don't put these on, your shocks will rub into the body of the Jeep, which I don't want to happen. They're new shocks, I want them to last. I don't want to just break them. So anyways, guys, the install, is super easy. We're not going to get super in depth. I'm just going to kind of show you a trick, uh, trying to get things to line up. If you're having issues, kind of show you everything when it's all done. But stay tuned. This is going to be a fairly straightforward video. So removing the protective boot is relatively easy to do. Just cut off the, the tab. And there's not much holding it on rather than it's just kind of being lift around the top. Just get a screwdriver, slide it in, lever it up, rotate it, do the exact same thing, rotate it up, and then it will pop off. And from here, you can literally just slide it straight off. Just so you can kind of see what I meant about the boot rubbing off the paint that's why i'm taking them off one other thing about these metal cloak joints is we're looking at my front lower control arm you can see it's kind of canted to the left the metal cloak automatically resets to where it needs to be you know your your johnny joint or your hind joint these metal cloak duraflex joints are self-centering so they always go back to where they need to be and so before i put these in i had to paint them i decided on a color check it out so I went with a, a gunmetal gray I think it looks nice so I didn't paint them to prevent them from rusting it's just I don't like a lot of color underneath my Jeep I like things as being very matte color if that makes sense just kind of drab I like it to look very European <laughs> Uh, but seriously, all I did, I hung them up, I took the joints off. I taped around the joint to prevent paint from getting in there. And I just hit it with primer, let that dry. I hit it with the paint, uh, did two, two coats primer, two coats of the paint. Then I just did a clear coat. That's it. So before we get all these in, another important step for any control arms that you get that are adjustable, always check the threads of your tie rod ends as you come in a little closer. Uh, you'll see some have plenty of anti-seize. Some is kind of skimp. Before we start putting these in, just get yourself some anti-seize and anti-seize the threads. This is important. You don't want these to ever seize. You don't want your 
your tie rod ends, your joints to seize up because uh, if you ever need to replace it and the threads are seized in, it's going to be stuck in your control arm and you're not going to be able to get it out. You're going to buy new control arms, but we're going to get these in. Uh, these are, you got to love anti seize it goes everywhere. I'm not going to bore you with all the install. This is really pretty straightforward. I'm just going to kind of keep to tips and tricks. That's it. You do one at a time. Don't do all the arms at once. You'll just make a mess with your axle just kind of free floating. When installing the metal cloak arms, just remember the jam nut always goes towards the frame of the Jeep, not the axles. And as you're replacing these, I mean, depending on if you're lifting to begin with, follow metal cloaks measurements that they provide with the instructions. I'm just going to try to get it close to where it's at now until I can go and get it aligned after I get these in. And just remember the ends with the cant in them, that it's bending away towards the natural curve that's already going. Uh, you don't need to tighten the jam nut quite yet. You can just put it down. That's roughly about the same size and put it in. The curve goes towards the inside of the Jeep. Well, if you're having issues getting it to go in between the mounting location, It's the mallet. So as you're trying to line this up and you see that it doesn't quite line up all the way. Well, when I was doing this solo, when I was doing the lifts solo, I would just use a pry bar and trying to align it to a point where I could basically get them to line up, have a screwdriver in there, and it, it was a mess. Well, there's an easier way of doing this. Misty is going to push on the tire He's just going to be pushing on the tire. All right, so since I was having issues getting it to line up and use the tire pushing technique on the axle side, we're just going to swap things around. I put the bolt in on the axle side. I took the bolt out for the frame side. I'm going to get my bolt. Where is my bolt? And have Misty push on the tire. As, as Misty pushes on the tire, you see, you just hold it in place, get your bolt ready on the other side, and start pushing. There we go. Easy peasy. In summary, loosen that one. Hey, not my finger. Loosen that guy. Loosen that guy. Take it out put it back in, put that guy in first, and then push the wheel, push or pull, depending which side you're on, to line up that guy, and boom. Then you have replaced the front lower control arm. Give it a little shake to get it in. Got my new shocks in. Everything all torqued up. Of course I got my new arms. All sides, jam nuts tight. Of course, if you guys have ever messed with control arms, the rear upper frame side is a pain in the ass with that flag nut and the gas tanks in the way. Uh, so there's there's no trick with that. Just it takes time. I had Misty do it. Did it? 
today's projects all finished. So just one more real quick thing about control arms is that con companies design their control arms to work together. So if you're over here getting control arms for a whole bunch of different manufacturers, you're not gonna be getting the full benefit of your lift. Now, I also have the outboard shock mounts. So from what I understand, uh, the shocks will be rubbing into the body. I haven't gotten into that quite yet, but I will. I wanna try flexing it out first to kind of see how much more flex I have. Cause I had quite a bit of flex, at least I felt like I had a lot of flex. But we're gonna see before we put the outboard shock mounts on. But guys, thank you for watching. Remember to like and comment subscribe and share and stay tuned for the next one y'all keep it easy ah.